Right now, a lot more has gone good for the Ravens than bad, especially with them sitting at 9-3. and three. They're currently on a bye week, so everybody chilling right now, recuperating, rejuvenating and whatnot. So everything's good, but there are still some huge concerns uh, from Baltimore Ravens fans about the present team, uh, but also about the future of the Baltimore Ravens as well. And we're about to get into what those huge concerns are. Before we do it, I appreciate y'all getting us to 70,000 subscribers and the reason I say us because it is us it's not me it's us because all of us working this thing together so I appreciate y'all uh, make sure you continue to subscribe to the channel let's keep on growing we ain't gotta stop at 70,000 let's keep it moving but also leave a like on the video because it helps out a ton it, it really seriously it really 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 does so leave a like on the video and know that I appreciate y'all watching I appreciate y'all supporting we Appreciate y'all watching and supporting. Now, uh, let's get into these questions from Team Keep It Clean. First one came from Dewan. He said, I think it's time to figure out this left tackle situation. This upcoming offseason, Stanley is constantly getting hurt or having lingering injuries. Media blames Lamar when the offense is not clicking, but the offensive line is part of the reason the offense is solid, not elite. Oof. That's... um. That's real right there. That's it's, it's real. Because like we always hear and we, we see. We ain't even just got to hear it. But we see it. Everything starts up front. Literally everything starts up front. Offense and defense. But for offense specifically, since we're talking about offense. That offensive line ain't blocking. Your quarterback is not going to be able to be as successful as he could be. Because he'll have to be running around. He'll have to be uh, trying to uh, uh, evade pressure that's getting in the backfield. Uh, it won't be comfortable. Won't be able to go through his progression as much. Won't be able to look at his reason and whatnot. It, it, it just makes everything that much harder from the beginning of the play. And think about, not even just the passing game. Think about the running game, too. If the O-line ain't blocking in a running game, then, I mean, they've been doing a lot better blocking in a running game than a passing game. But, again, it is, in my opinion, not easier, but it's easier because when, and when you're running, when the offense is running, you downfield blocking. You just run, hey, let me go find somebody and knock them out. But in pass protection, you sitting there and you waiting for them to come at you. So in my opinion, I would think that, um, and I'm not an offensive lineman. I'm probably big enough to be an offensive lineman. But I'm not an offensive lineman. But um, I'm sure people who have, whether y'all played offensive line before, y'all know a lot more than me because I know y'all do. Uh, y'all would understand more. But anyway, um, it's, yeah, everything starts with the offensive line. Everything does. Pass game, run game, all that stuff. So if the offensive line is playing well, oh, yeah, things are smooth. And we've seen it. We've seen it so many times, like, with Lamar Jackson with the offensive line. We've seen it where when he has protect. oh, my goodness. When he got protection, it's, it's over. Like, it's really over. And we've seen him do stuff without protect. But when he got protection and consistent protect, oh, my goodness. It's, it's nasty, man. Nasty in a good way, of course. So, yeah, man, we, we, we hoping that that offensive line, maybe they, they just needed some time off. I think they were just tired. So when they come off this bye week, hopefully they'll they'll get it right. But anyway, he said, uh, we need old, we need an old line to protect our franchise quarterback. If you not if not, you will end up getting our quarterback hurt. Uh, I know the Ravens got a lot of money invested in Stanley, but they also have way more invested in Lamar, and something has to be done. This this year, this off season, this is the first. Off season, where I read it somewhere where the Baltimore Ravens can actually, if they chose to, this is just an option. I'm not saying cut him, fire him, release him. I'm not saying, I'm just saying what it is. But this is the first year where the Baltimore Ravens could, if they chose to, move on from Ronnie Stanley. They could. Um, and they, I believe they would get like maybe like eight mil in cap relief, something like that. Uh, and they could do a, uh, a pre or post June 1st cut, you know, with the pre June 1st cut, whatever dead money you acquire, then you eat it all that current season. But if you do a post June 1st cut, then any dead money is split up between the current season or the upcoming season and then the season after that. So it's split in half. So it would all just depend on what the Ravens wanted to do, if the Ravens even wanted to do that. Um, and another question, I mean, because we're talking about offensive line, we're talking about left tackle. Another question came from my guy, BB. He said, will Daniel Falele start at left tackle? Your thoughts? I don't think so. I don't see it. I don't think the Ravens envisioned that either. Um, Daniel Falele, primarily a right tackle, but right now just... <coughs> 
he's been more of a project. Um, Daniel Falele has not been a finished product. And if, I mean, he, how could he be a finished product? He's not a starter. Uh, he got Ronnie Stanley on one side, got Morgan Moses on the other side. And if one of those two go down, he's not next in line to start. It's Patrick McCary. So with Daniel Falele, I don't envision him starting at left tackle. Now, I don't know if you were talking about the present or the future. Um, and But th- I guess the answer to both for me uh, will probably be no right now. It will it'll, it'll be a no. Um, I think the Ravens, they look at Daniel Falele as a, we're hopeful that this thing works out. This dude is a mountain of a man. You know, the Baltimore Ravens, they, um, they like drafting for, uh, like, how do I say, cause I ain't about to call nobody a freak or like freak of nature. There we go. That's what the Ravens like drafting that sometimes. Sometimes they like taking some swings on some freaks of nature because they see the potential. They're like, man, if we can get the most out of this guy, then, ooh, boy, that was a Dafe away. A Dafe away was this outside linebacker, crazy speed. He was super fast. He had no sacks, so the production wasn't there, but he was a freak of nature um, athletically. So they looked at him and they're like, you know what, let's use a first-round pick on him. We got two of them, but let's go ahead and swing for the fences. Um, so early on, he had some moments, and there was a, a bit of a lack of consistency from Adafi away, but recently he's been really turning it on. Uh, and this has been his year after he came back from injury, he's been killing it. Um, now with Daniel Falele, I think I was saying Daniel Falele, this, and they called him a mountain of a man because he literally is. He's like the size of like two mountains stacked on top of each other. He's huge. But um, I think with him, I think it was the same thing. They were like, man, if, if we can get, because it, it kind of remind me like of, uh, of Zeus. Not Orlando Brown Jr., but Senior, Pops. Because um, he was just, just giant, giant of offensive linemen. Um, and, and that's what Falele reminds me of because he just, he's huge, man. Um, but I think the Ravens were thinking the same thing. Hey, whatever we can get out of him, we can really turn the corner with Daniel Falele. Oh, man, just imagine. So we'll see. But, again, right now I don't envision him as being the starting left tackle of the future currently or, uh, or again, currently or in the future. Um, right tackle, possibly, possibly. Um, he would have to get through some hurdles, in my opinion, because there's still Morgan Moses. Pat McCarry still around. Um, but we'll see how it goes. But I, I don't think Ravens are looking at him like a starter right now. Next question came from my guy, Jarvo. He said, the Ravens got to be more aggressive on offense, but I'll take the win. Oh, yeah, we'll take the wins all day. All day, because we don't want to be taking no losses, man. But anyway, he said, my question for you is, do you think Bowser will be back against the Rams? No, I, I do not. I don't think Bowser will be back against the Rams, against the 49ers, against the Dolphins, against the Steelers, against the Jaguars, again in the playoffs. I don't think Bowser will be back at all this year. Um, I, I just don't, just to be as straight up as we could possibly be. Uh, and his other question was, do you watch or follow the Baltimore Ravens Wired channel on YouTube? You know what? I, I don't. I don't. And I know Baltimore Ravens, their production team, they do an excellent job. Uh, Cause I see the little clips here and there, uh, like on Twitter and stuff, uh, but I don't normally watch it. I, I don't know why. I just, I just don't. I don't have nothing against it or anything like that. Cause I know it's, it's always put together well, but I just, I never tune into it. I don't know why. But anyway, he said it gives fans an inside view on how the Ravens prep for games, and it feels like you're actually on the sideline on game day. Definitely worth checking out, and would love to hear your feedback. Now, one question that I do have because I always see like after the Ravens win. They'll be like, oh, this episode of Wired, uh, Wednesdays at 8 p.m. I think that's when it comes on. But um, do they do that after a loss? Do, do, they, do they put an episode of Wired after the loss? Or do they just do it after wins? Uh, just, it's a genuine question. Because um, I, 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 always, I always wondered that. Like, oh, do, would they still edit all the videos and edit all them clips and stuff and the audio and the people that's mic'd up? Would they do that after they lose? Hey, but hopefully for the rest of the season, we ain't got to worry about no Wired clips if they lose. Because they could go ahead and win everything But anyway, he said, uh, God bless you and your family And let's make some statement wins after this bye Because we have some Super Bowl contenders we're about to face Yeah, it's going to be some really good games coming up Really, really good game Really tough, tough games coming up for the Baltimore Ravens The next question came from my guy, Kobe He said, why Justin Herbert doesn't receive criticism? I ain't Raven been a fan since 2019 And I'm proud to see your growth and how to deal with adversity You truly a Raven <laughs> 
appreciate that, Kobe. He said, I hope your family is doing great. Uh, and my question is, why does Justin Herbert not receive the same criticisms as Lamar? Well, that's because with Justin Herbert, um, he is uh, what a lot of people want and view their prototypical uh, quarterback to look and play like. Um, Justin Herbert, tall guy, big arm, uh, more so of a traditional type quarterback. Uh, and with Lamar, um, they wanted him to be everything but that. They did not view Lamar as that uh, because he did a lot of things outstanding. Um, but for a lot of people, they were like, no, he should be a receiver. He should be a running back. Um, so, yeah, that 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 was that. And there's a lot, a lot of other stuff, too, a lot of other reasons. But anyway, he said people keep making excuses for him. He had two head coaches and different coordinators. Lamar also had three different offensive coordinators and still was able to win MVP and a playoff game and continuing to play good after getting paid. When are we going to stop making excuses for Herbert and just admit he is the problem? He is a very talented quarterback who can't finish the job. Just want to hear your thoughts. Thank you and have a blessed day. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, Justin Herbert. Uh, and this... See, this this conversation is always fun because when it comes to Justin Herbert, there will be some people, because he's, I think he's 30 and 31 in his career. They'd be like, oh, wins are not a QB stat. They're not a QB stat. Um, but in my opinion, they they are. They, they're not, because it's obviously a team game, but they are because the quarterback has such a huge, huge impact on the game, a huge impact on the game. And there's a big difference. Like, like, look at the Ravens, for example. When Lamar plays, oh, yeah, amazing record, great record. They hardly ever lose. Awesome. We're spoiled. Lamar doesn't play. <laughs> Bad record, terrible record. They hardly ever win. <laughs> it feels like stuff is spoiled, but not the good kind of spoiled. Um, so QB wins, in my opinion, they are, they are a stat because uh, QBs impact the game big time. Now... There can be some games where um, it don't feel like a QB won the game for you because it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Like, I remember, I, I'll never forget the, the Browns game. I think it was Sunday Night Football uh, where the Ravens played the Browns. And that was a game where Lamar Jackson threw four interceptions. Four interceptions. You 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 hear you about a quarterback throwing four interceptions? Oh, oh yeah, that team lost. They got blown out. Ravens won the game, though. Lamar threw four interceptions. I think every pass was intended for Mark Andrews, too. Every interception was intended for Mark Andrews. Every single one. So um, it's, it, it's going to happen where there are going to be some wins that your team gets and the quarterback may not have looked so good. Uh, but overall, they are a team. But anyway, back to the subject because, you know, we were talking about something completely different. Justin Herbert. Um, Justin Herbert, he, he's nice, man. He, he's, he's nice. And I think he is a, a good quarterback. Um, but they just ain't been winning. Like straight up. The Chargers just have not been winning. They haven't. And it's crazy because they, and I know that they're dealing with a lot of injuries this year. But, I mean, it's like, I know Ravens fans ain't about to buy that. As long as Ravens got their starting quarterback, like, look, we're going to be in it. Ravens going to win. So, and that's the thing, man. Like, the, the two are not judged or looked at the same from people. They're really not. They're really not. Because, you know, like, we know Ravens. They deal with injuries like crazy every year, every year, without fail, unfortunately. Even though this year has been better, but they're still dealing with significant injuries. Like, we done lost quite a few people for the year. And some people we ain't get back. Some people we wondering what's going on with them. Like, Ravens have lost a, a lot throughout this year. Like, and, and it's, it's crazy because we're all looking at it like, man, Ravens, this is the healthiest that they've been in a while. But they still have a lot of people that are out. Mark Andrews done for probably the year. J.K. Dobbins. A lot of people forget about him. Ardarius Washington. A lot of people forget about him. With Marlon Humphrey had been out for a while and he missed, just missed his last game. He'll be back now, but he had missed a chunk of time. Um, Ronnie Stanley, he missed time. Morgan Moses, he missed time. Uh, and then, of course, Dafe Away, he missed time. David Ajabo, he's done for the year. Tyus Bowser never started for the year. Um, so guys have been in and out, some for longer than others. But Ravens, they they still been dealing with. Is, did I say Mark Andrews? I think I said Mark Andrews. Maybe I didn't say Mark Andrews. But he, yeah, I know I did say Mark Andrews. I said he probably done for the year. Anyway, so but Ravens, they they know what the injuries are like. They understand what the injuries are like. But if Lamar's playing, then they overcome a lot of that stuff. With Justin Herbert, 
when they healthy, they win just as much as they lose. And then, then with injuries, I mean, you can talk about injuries because injuries are a real thing, but they, they can't overcome it. They don't overcome it. So, again, good quarterback, but what what is it that's missing to why the Chargers just, they don't win like that? 